the other project that is on today's list is installing the brand new Olex. It's a Linux-based uh, marine navigational program and bathymetric charting program. Really, really cool. We just upgraded to the latest version. It's not cheap, but it's well worth it. Uh, because when you're trawling and just fishing in general, the bottom depths are super important. Uh, sometimes fish will be in a certain depth and they won't be in a depth that's one fathom or six feet more or less. Uh, it's pretty crazy. So really, really important to know the bottom depths. Uh, and the Olex is going into this monitor and it's gonna live right up here. Here's all the uh, RS-232. NMEA 0183 data connections. Uh, it's pulling information from the echo sounder and the satellite compass as well as the AIS. So we'll get that connected and fire it up. All right. Oh, get all of our data connections made. It's going to be kind of tricky, although I don't know. I think I'll just make sure I got plenty of slack. We can stick it somewhere in there. And the mounting holes <laughs> are just a little different, I think. No? It's actually, looks like it's about, yeah, it's just a skosh different. We're gonna do our data connections now. Gosh, <laughs> I was melting it the total wrong way. We'll make sure, okay, red is positive, same as the. Yep, red is positive, black is negative. Definitely don't want to get this going, reverse polarity. may need to cut one zip tie. Huh. The VGA connection. Is opposite. And I'll we'll cut the zip tie. Be able to get some extra slack that way. Perfect. And I'll have to get a tiny screwdriver for my power connection. Do not want to leave that guy loose. Perfect. And we'll also use that for our data connections. We're going to cut that zip tie too. These are uh, little tiny zip tie cutters are just awesome for projects like these because so often you leave those little tails slit your finger open Navigational data inputs connected. Double check our polarity. We're good. Let's press the power button. 
All right, we got blinking lights and nice. Wow. And it's gonna select that in 19 seconds. I do not have a keyboard connected to this right now. Five, four, three, two, one. Autopilot up there, VHF radios, echo sounder. We'll actually get the echo sounder going. Uh, here we go. It's a Simrad ES70. Very nice machine, kind of the gold standard up here. A little different than a fish finder that would be on your recreational boat. This one's pretty accurate, it's a 300 kilowatt uh, transmitter, or transducer, excuse me. Didn't have the transducer interface turned on. Okay, we might have to try again. And let's power off. This is a PC based unit. There we go. All right. These are just uh, screenshots. Go to normal operation. Not really going to be a heck of a lot to look at at the dock here because we're pretty shallow. But we're pinging at one kilowatt, 1000 watts. 6.7 fathoms at the dock, and there's the seafloor. Looks like the Olex is still thinking. To change the battery in my mouse. All right. Cool. We got it. Awesome, awesome program. And I think I need a new battery. So, this is giving me all the bathymetric curves, which again, for trawling or just fishing in general is super important. And it's really, really detailed resolution. We'll put on depth contours every one fathom. And it looks like I've got to adjust my echo sounder depth for tide compensation, which that's all stuff I can do in the settings. But let's go to... Yeah, bottom, okay. And now we're gonna select, you can highlight a specific bottom depth, which for trawling, really important. A lot of times you wanna stay in a specific depth. Again, I'm just starting to kinda learn how to use this newer version. Interface is a little different but yeah overall it's awesome um, AIS targets way better AIS interface on this one here's all the AIS targets and we'll turn off hot colors and then go to bottom relief alright this is the cool feature so you can actually see 3D. Pretty cool. Alright. Good for now.